Now, Pakistani police are still surrounding the home of the former Prime Minister Imran Khan in Lahore. Khan has issued a tweet saying that he expects to be re-arrested. Police say Khan is sheltering supporters who were involved in violent protests. The opposition leader's arrest last week sparked street demonstrations across Pakistan, but the Supreme Court declared his detention invalid and he was released and allowed to return home. And we can now speak to Pakistan's former Prime Minister Imran Khan, who joins me from his home in Lahore. Thank you for your time, Mr Khan. Now, we understand the police have surrounded your house. Can you tell us what the situation is at the moment and can you confirm that you're, you expect to be arrested again? Well, police is uh, around my house, not in as, as large numbers as they were last night. Because last night, the plan was that they said there were 40 terrorists hidden in my house and they were going to come and uh, 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 grab these terrorists. So therefore, uh, there was a, the whole area was surrounded by police. But what I did was I asked all the journalists beforehand, I said, come over to my house and see where the terrorists are. So that diffused the situation because clearly there were no terrorists. So that's when the police uh, could not take action. But the answer to your question, do I expect to be re-arrested? Yes, uh, it could happen any time because even though I, I'm on bail on everything now, the police can't arrest me on any charges because the, the courts have given me bail. But unfortunately, right now, the law of the jungle is prevailing. Might is right. Seven and a half thousand of my workers have been arrested. All my senior leadership has been arrested. So... Uh, uh, what will happen, I don't know, but I expect to be re-arrested. Mr Khan, the, the, the Pakistani government says that you are sheltering some of your supporters who are accused of attacking the army. So do you reject that claim? It is absolute nonsense. What happened was that when they illegally abducted me from the, uh, from the high court precincts, it was all illegal, and the way they grabbed me, they beat all the, my lawyers, people got injured, as if I was some terrorist. And those images created this uh, demonstrations all over Pakistan because my party is by far the biggest party, federal party in Pakistan. Now, what they did was they used that, these mass demonstrations that took place, they perpetuated violence, which is... I don't remember such violence. They shot, shot dead 25 people, which we already know, but there are others which we can't know because then they started arresting seven and a half, half thousand workers have been arrested. We don't know what's going on. All my leadership has been arrested. So they used that pretext to crush my party because this is the election year and my party's poll in the polls, it's 70% ratings right now. Mr. So in Khan. order to crush the party that we don't contest the elections. This is why all this is happening. Mr Khan, you've spoken about the street protests that were sparked by your arrest last week. Will you be calling for calm among your supporters to avoid further violence, or are you encouraging people to protest? Look, the, prote the protests took place when they saw me being abducted from the precincts of the High Court by the army. That's why the protests took place. There are no protests right now. There is no public disorder. But what is happening is that there's a crackdown, unprecedented crackdown taking place. I again repeat, my entire senior, senior leadership is in jail. They get bail from court. As they come out of the court, they again get rearrested. There are women who've been arrested, a lot of the women living in awful conditions because it's extremely hot there. And unfortunately, uh, you know, right now it is a reign of terror we are facing. Mr. So Khan, the, I'd like to I'd no like to ask you right now. I'd like to ask you, if I may, about the dozens of cases that have been brought against you in recent months, mostly on charges of corruption, but there's also terrorism, contempt of court. I'd like to hear from you. Do you deny all of them? Look, there are 150 cases on me. Out of those 150 cases, uh, four 
were, when I was in jail, when I was inside the jail, there were four more criminal cases against me. There are 40 terrorist terrorism cases against me. 15 criminal cases in one day. Even a hardened criminal would, could not commit 15 crimes in a day. So there, there are two corruption cases which are being contested. Uh, so, I mean, as someone who's been known in this country for 50 years, never committed one crime, certainly in the last few months, he's had 150 cases. No one believes this. People know me in this country for 50 years. You have uh, accused the country's military chief of being behind your last arrest, and you've also accused a senior general of being involved in a plan to kill you. These, of course, are serious accusations. Do you have evidence that supports these uh, allegations that you've made? The senior military intelligence officer was involved in my assassination attempt. I preempted it. I warned everyone that this is going to happen. When it did happen, I was lucky to be alive. 12 people got bullet wounds, one, got, one died, and they would not let me register a case. It was my fundamental right that I could, the suspects who were involved, I should have registered a case so they could be investigated. They never even allowed an investigation. So how am I going to bring my evidence forward? And whatever evidence, was coming through through a joint investigation committee, they sabotaged it. So how am I going to bring my evidence in public? And as for the charge of the army chief, well, the army who is who picked me up from the high court illegally, ruled by the Supreme Court, and the orders to the army comes right from the top. So one man takes the decision. <laughs> Mr Khan, your country finds itself in a political crisis right now. How do you see this crisis playing out, developing over the coming months in Pakistan? Pakistan faces uh, a huge political crisis, but even a bigger economic crisis, because we have never had such bad economic indicators like we have today. Our inflation now is worse than Sri Lanka when people came out to on the streets. So unemployment, uh, inflation are record in this country, especially inflation. And um, the, the answer to both the problems, the politi political crisis and the economic crisis are free and fair elections. This is the election year. So already the Supreme Court had ruled there should have been elections on the 14th of May in two of the provinces. The government refused. They violated the constitution. They violated the orders of the Supreme Court. So the answer, are, the answer to our crises are free and fair elections. Mr Khan, thank you so much for your time. Pakistan's former Prime Minister Imran Khan. Thank you. And DW reporter Beanish Javid joins me here in the studio to talk, talk more about this. Um, Beanish, we just heard there from the former Prime Minister um, of Pakistan, Imran Khan. Tell me what you made of, of, of what he said and this crackdown, as he's calling it. Does the military have valid reasons for what they're doing? So, Anya, like just Imran Khan said, that uh, military arrested him. But actually, it was the country's anti-corruption agency that arrested him because th the agency says that he was not cooperating um, in the investigation of a corruption case. Um, and there's, recently, we also saw that police also tried to arrest him. But um, apparently, this is... Uh, uh, it's, it's the involvement of anti-corruption agency or the police. But how, what actually is happening or what many analysts believe is basically it's a fight between Imran Khan and the country's military. And why it is happening? Because Imran Khan has crossed or has broken the unwritten rules of the country. He has criticized and humiliated the country's most powerful institution for a very long time and has accused them, like he just said in the interview, of basically the military, senior media, uh, military leadership of being involved in, a, in a, a plot to actually kill him. These are serious accusations. And uh, 
and we saw when he was arrested uh, that anger that he has, uh, his followers had uh, accepted this narrative of Imran Khan. And when he was arrested last uh, last time, we saw that the protesters stormed military installations of the country. They went into a general's house. Uh, they attacked. The sort of the public sort of attacked Pakistan's military. This is unimaginable for a country like Pakistan, uh, and therefore, uh, what is happening is that what was never expected is happening now. And I just think that this tussle between Imran Khan and the military will continue, and efforts will be made um, to arrest him. So, what you're saying, Imran Khan, is breaking the rules. He's shaking things up. And is is this essentially how this political crisis in Pakistan is escalating? further? Uh, yes, I think it is going to further escalate because, um, and also just like Imran Khan has said, there has been a crackdown uh, on, his, on his party workers. Now, uh, thousands of them have been arrested. He and there are also being efforts made uh, to basically um, uh, ask some of his um, uh, leadership to defect from his party. Uh, so, uh, but this is not something new. For a country like Pakistan, this has happened in the past. Um, some of the corruption charges against him or some of the cases against Imran Khan are valid. But basically, he is doing what was unimaginable in Pakistan. Uh, politicians in the past have criticized the military, uh, but uh, never in Pakistan history we have seen uh, where uh, a politician um, so openly and so publicly is going after uh, the country's military leadership. And how this crisis will unfold, it's very difficult to say right now. Looks like it's going to uh, escalate. DW's Beenish Javid, thanks so much for your analysis.